Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been far too long. I think it's been two years since my last upload. But I just wanted to give you guys an updated review on my 2016 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X and everything I've added onto it since my last videos. And obviously a lot has changed and this truck has gone through so much in those years. <clears throat> but yeah, here's how it looks now. And let's get started with what I've added on. So I'll, I'll leave a detailed list of everything that I've added onto it in the description down below. And let's just get started obviously with <laughs> biggest thing right now is that I don't have my front bumper or at least the lower portion of it and it's because of an accident that happened on a highway there was a truck in front of me and uh, his load dropped off into the road and I didn't react fast enough so I clipped my bumper on the passenger side and I did have to cut it off where that hard line was <coughs> so this is how it's been for the last few months and uh, I mean I'm kind of a fan of the no bumper look and a lot of people do like it as well but obviously I do have plans now to uh, get an off-road steel version from Coastal Off-Road or maybe some other companies that come to mind like ARB. But yeah, this is how it's looking right now. And uh, let's get started with the headlights. So these headlights are from Morimoto and I purchased them off of Square One Off-Road and they've been really good. They were $1,800 Canadian shipped to my house. And um, I cannot recommend these headlights enough. I've been running them for the last few months and they've been really well off-road and on-road. So yeah, 100% if you're looking for new headlights for your Frontier, go with Morimoto. And I think eBay has some budget options as well that are really nice. So check those out too. Um, secondly, I do have these pod lights <coughs> for auxiliary lighting from Vivid Lumen. They are a Canadian company as well. <coughs> oh, sorry, not as well, because Morimoto is from the States, but Vivid Lumen is a Canadian company that um, I was seeing a lot of on Instagram, and I love their design of their auxiliary lighting and their pod lights, so I went ahead and bought a pair. So these are the FNG5, so they are the five inch um, model, and I think it's not really usual to see like a five inch pod light set up on a hood mount but you know oftentimes it's like a three inch light or even two inch but I think um, for the oversized look they look really good and they match the truck for sure and I think what's best about um, Vivid Lumen is that they provide these caps so they have these lens covers for the lights that are interchangeable so it's just these four clips that have it on and you can swap these out for anything so this is like that hyper spot yellow I also have the clear one for just a spotlight, but they have combo ones and various colors too on their website. So I'll link their website as well as Morimoto's in the description down below if you're looking to pick a pair up for yourself. Um, in terms of the setup in the future, <coughs> I have the crash bar still um, and my radiator is exposed, so which is why I was looking for the uh, steel bumper. But if I wasn't going to go for that option and keep it the way it is, I'll have to figure out if there's a way to get that rad cover uh, covered up with some sort of uh, plate, metal plate or steel plate. And then just have a few more of those FNG5 just lined up in the front row or even hood mounted or sorry, um, roof mounted and just across there as well, which is a pretty typical and common setup for pod lights. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> so far, that's the setup right now for um, pod lights on the hood mount, and then my headlights from Morimoto. And if we come along to the side, I just want to show you guys the stance right now on this lift kit that I got. So this is the three-inch leveling kit from Trucks. Um, it's um, three-inch in the front, 1.5-inch in the rear. So it's a rear block, and then a uh, spacer. In the front sits really nice um, one more thing to mention is that I do have a two inch spacer for my wheel setup just to give it a little bit more of a poke on the side as you can see see so yeah, it stands up pretty nicely I'm still on stock size tires these are the same tires that I've used for the three years of my ownership of this truck Goodyear Wrangler dirt tracks at a 265 75 R16 
Um, so still stock size, but with two inch spacers and a three inch leveling kit to give it the stance it's at right now. These tires are definitely worn out though. <laughs> like, yeah, three years of um, abuse. <laughs> yeah, a lot of off-road and harsh winter conditions up north and just rough driving in general. Like, I'm really surprised how these dirt tracks have held up over the years. I'm going to continue using this brand and this model from Goodyear until they upset me somehow, but they've performed really well in winter conditions and I'm really happy with them on and off road. So yeah, just a better look now at those uh, front spacer lift. You can see right there. And then I also wanted to mention that um, I did do a melt mod as well as bash in that front end, just in case in the future when I'm looking up size, I have more clearance over there for larger tires and a larger wheel and tire setup in general. And um, obviously another addition that I've put on here are my mud flaps. So these are from a company called Rock Blocks. Amazing company. Um, I reached out to them and I also continue to see them on Instagram. And a lot of people were running these, especially on those um, compact hatches and stuff, hatchbacks and sport hatches. And I just love the look of them. They're on Jeeps too and it's everywhere. They make mud flaps for a lot of vehicles and I just think they look great on the truck too. Um, I went with the OD green or military green for my truck. It's a pretty unique combination for like that military green and silver. I didn't want to go for like the basic all black and silver look, so I think they really pop out. <coughs> and yeah, they look really great on the truck. It just it's a great color to match with the silver and black. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm still running the same um, running boards um, that I have been for the last few years. And they've been great. I mean, the truck isn't really that high. It's a three inch level. I don't really often use the steps, but you know, it's there for in the future. <laughs> if I was to go with a bigger lift, which might be something I'll talk about now because, um, yeah, like I said before, stock size, um, tires and same, obviously factory uh, wheels. So I think my plan was to go with um, the rough country six inch uh, lift kit uh, suspension lift kit and go for a 35 by 12 and a half r17 or 18 i'll actually show you guys a um not show you guys but i'll link a channel that i found out about recently and this guy's got a sick frontier um the rough country six inch lift and running 35s too it just looks great the stance is amazing and it's something i want to replicate in the future if it's an option for me or keep the same lift that I have now and run a uh, 295 7017. So there's a couple options, um, but yeah, that six inch lift with the 35s just looks so mean. Um, definitely a badass setup for sure. Um, yeah, I'll link his channel down below. I forget what it's called exactly, but I'll put it down there. And uh, yeah, check his truck out, it's super cool. Sick truck, sick build. Yeah, and let's move on now. Um, so actually I did forget to mention the tint as well <clears throat> so right now the setup is 20% uh, in the front and 15% in the rear so both front windows are at 20% and uh, all rear windows including the back sliding ones and everything is at 15% so not crazy dark probably should have gone darker now that hindsight's 2020 <laughs> I mean yeah I would like a darker setup maybe even a limo tint in the back but again, I, I like the fact that it's kind of blended well. So 15 and 20 in the front, yeah, it looks kind of nice. And it's still dark and there's some lighting. It's, you know, it's a good level of tint for sure. Um, what did I forget? So yeah, I also do have an exhaust, probably my favorite modification to this truck by far. It just sounds so good. And I'll be sure to add a couple clips in here of how this thing sounds, but just at idle, you can just tell like this thing sounds mean. So this is the MBRP three inch cap back, stainless steel T409. And I added the hex tip as well from MBRP in the black um, finish. Yeah, just looks great and sounds great too. So yeah, I'll add those clips in here of how it sounds. Hopefully you guys like it. And yeah, for a four liter V6, it just really sounds great. Um, better look again at the rear mud flaps here honestly yeah, the mud flaps have changed the look of this truck entirely i love the green on it it really pops 
me know what you guys think. I added the uh, Rock Blocks decal and MBRP one as well on the rear, so that's new from the setup. Um, still have that rear shackle. Um, yeah. I also have this uh, emergency light that I've mounted to the top. Um, it's helped me a lot, actually. So, you know, obviously with having your ha hazards on when you're pulling off to the side of the road, it's nice and still visible, but to have that extra lighting on top to really make sure people know you're there, it's an extra level of safety for yourself and others around you. So yeah, it's just something extra I've added on. It's just a 14 inch uh, emergency light on the top and it does surround, it goes all around. So 360 lighting. And yeah, the strobe options are nice too. I'll make sure to do a separate video on my lighting options. So the Morimoto headlights, the pod lights, as well as that emergency light. So a separate lighting video will be made in the future just to add some more content on this channel and keep you guys happy. But yeah. This has been the truck um, so far. A lot has changed for sure. Um, what do you guys think? I also have that tunnel cover uh, that I switched out. So before I had the backflip, <coughs> uh, the backflip um, tunnel cover as well. It's also a trifold. Um, but unfortunately, when I was up north, the conditions were just too harsh and it ended up cracking on me. So the vinyl and everything cracked on the sides. And uh, I was really upset because that was a really heavy duty cover. And I opted out for the OEM Nissan one now. So yeah, it is Nissan branded, it is nice. It's still sleek, but it's definitely a lot more lightweight. Some might like the fact that it's lighter. I personally prefer a heavier tunnel cover myself. So kind of upset that I didn't have the backflip one anymore, but that's OEM Nissan. And uh, yeah, so I do have the three inch level. 1.5 inch in the rear, three inch in the front. You know, looking at it directly from the side, you can kind of tell that the rear sits still a little bit lower. I have parked next to a couple stock Pro 4Xs and honestly, there's not much of a difference in the rear. So, but again, I think it's mostly my fault because a couple of years back, I had like 800 pounds of stone in the rear. So I kind of self-leveled the truck. But then after adding this, yeah, it's kind of more obvious. I mean, my leaf strings are pretty much flat now. So probably the reason why, um, yeah. There we go, better look at the tint. Yeah, this truck has been really good to me. I've enjoyed driving it the last three years of ownership and it hasn't let me down. It's been through a lot, like I said in the beginning of the video, like <laughs> I was headed home for a Christmas break from the territories and I was driving back to Calgary here. And um, unfortunately, the truck slipped on black ice and went into a ditch pretty deep. I don't know if I still have footage of that or a picture of it. Um, but yeah, I was just stuck in a ditch for like three weeks while I was back home in Calgary. And it just sat there in like minus 30, minus 40 weather, wind chill and everything. Just was a block of ice on the side of the McKenzie Highway for like almost a month, which is so shitty. But yeah, um, they recovered it. Brought it back to the um, place I was living at in the territories. I had it just thaw out on a warmer weekend and I just spent hours and hours just chucking ice out of the engine bay and just kind of all over suspension components in general. It was just, it was a tough time for this truck and it's definitely seen better days, but um, you know, including today, I'm so glad of where it is right now. I'm happy with all the mods I've done to it and I hope you guys like it too. Um, just a better look again at that poke from the two inch spacers. It just looks so sick. I know it's stock size tires, but still I appreciate the stance for a smaller truck. So yeah, like I mentioned before, you know, ideally like a six inch lift from rough country and then some 35, so 35 by 12 and a half R17 or 18, um, probably 17, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. I think that would look so sick with that rough country lift. And um, otherwise, you know what, maybe just keep this same level and then go for a 295-7017. I don't know, I'm still conflicted. Like I mentioned it before, but I don't know what you guys think. I'm definitely gonna have to get um, upper control arms if I stick with this lift, because I do have some call bucket contact. I don't know, It's um, I don't really notice it as much, but yeah. That's the current setup right now. Let's see if I can get more a little closer. Not 
But yeah, this is the setup right now. Um, I honestly don't really hear much contact, in my opinion, but you know, it's bound to happen with a lift that's more than two and a half inches with uh, the Frontier in general. So yeah, that's what it's looking like right now. <coughs> yeah, ever since I did the melt mod and kind of bashed in that section there, I'm not too worried about upsizing my tires in the future. But again, if some if uh, some modifications are necessary to run certain size tires, I'll have to do it. But the last thing I'm going to do is, I mean, last resort is obviously cutting the fender itself, which is something I'm not looking forward to doing. But yeah, there's options for this truck moving forward and my build in general, but I'm definitely not done. Um, but for now, this is how it sits. This is how it looks. And I hope you guys like it. Uh, feel free to like and comment and subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video. And of course, if you have any tips or advice for me with my build or suggestions, feel free to drop it down in the comment section down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.